All right, UFO believers, listen up. You may well be vindicated. We are back with an out-of-this-world town square and a new book out later this week. Government officials, pilots, and scientists going on the record about their own close encounters. Uh, Michio Kaku, professor of physics at CUNY University and host of Sci-Fi Science on the Science Channel, got to read the book early, and he joins us with a review. Quite simply, Professor, do unidentified flying objects without question exist? 95% of all UFO sightings can be immediately identified as the planet Venus, weather balloons, weather anomalies, swamp gas, you name it, we got it nailed. It's the 5% that give you the willies. 5% remain totally unexplained. And uh, you're saying to 5% unexplained to the point where they are legitimately an unidentified flying object. And we're talking about generals. We're talking about Air Force pilots. We're talking about governors of states that claim that, hey, this is beyond our understanding of the laws of physics. Can I have an unidentified flying object that is not necessarily from some other place? It's possible, but we've looked at all the alternatives. Uh, these are multiple sightings by multiple modes. In other words, pilots, eyewitnesses, radar, visual sightings. These are very hard to dismiss, the, the handful of sightings. Uh, one over Alaska, another over Belgium, another, another over Iran. The handful of things that still cannot be explained defy known laws of physics. So then, by that definition, does this confirm the existence of life on other planets, in your opinion? I wouldn't go that far. We need alien DNA or an alien chip. That would nail it to the wall right there. We don't have that. We don't have the smoking gun. But this book is as close as you're going to get to the smoking gun. We're talking about senior military officials who were involved in the investigations of these incidents saying we are clueless. If you were to look at those who argue, well, hang on, there's no way that they could get here from some other planet, that, they, that, that the technology doesn't exist, the stars are too far away, you rebut that sort of thinking with what? We, those people assume that there may be 100 years ahead of us, in which case it's impossible for them to reach us. But if they're a thousand, a million years ahead of us, then new laws of physics begin to open up. So we have to open our mind to the possibility that they're not just a super version of us, that they could be thousands, millions of years more advanced. Why would they not then pay us a visit in a way that is more recognizable? Go visit the White House, maybe stop out to Yellowstone. My point of view is if you're walking on a country road in St. Ant Hill, you go down to the ants and say, I bring you trinkets, I bring you bees, I give you nuclear energy, or perhaps maybe you step on a few of them. If they're that advanced, maybe they simply are not that interested in us. All right. Listen, Professor, it is an absolute pleasure. Um, if we have any strange sightings, at least now I know who to call. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> do you t before I let you go, do you teach on this subject at, at, at the university? On uh, UFOs I mentioned it when I teach astronomy, also in sci-fi science. We have a whole episode about what kinds of physics could open up in the next thousand, next million that years. That could let us travel a few million miles at a time. New kinds of physics on the Science Channel. Very cool. Listen, uh, a pleasure. That does it for us. I'm Dylan Radigan. Hardball's up right now.